Hi, this is Dominique Finney and I'm at the National Herbalist Association of Australia Sydney Seminar Series. I'm really lucky because I've got Dr Stuart Glassenberry with me who is a GP registrar but he's also a medical herbalist. Hey Stuart. Hi, how's it going? Great, That's great. Um, it's really interesting that you've got that mix of being a GP registrar as yeah. well as a herbalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, it's, it's been a really long, um, a long road I must admit. Mm -hmm. um, I started studying herbal medicine in the early uh, 90s and then realized um, that probably going on and doing medicine was um, something that I wanted to do anyway um, and I, I look at the end of the day I think it, you know it's been a long road but I do really encourage mm -hmm. um, our you know any of our members who are thinking on you know going down the same pathway it's a it's a very rewarding um, and valuable experience obviously um, I think that on, on numerous levels I, I like the idea of integrating complementary medicine and medicine together mm -hmm. I think I think that you know truly in the holistic sense I think that kind of incorporating this you know is, is quite holistic actually um, being able to have the strong scientific background and the med and the medical background as well as the complementary medicine which focuses more say on the preventative health care or you know those sorts of things keeping people healthy it's a it's a it's a health approach rather than a disease approach that medicine has mm -hmm. um, but I think that the two um, can work really really nicely together so um, mm. yeah so I know I really encourage any of our any of our members and, and students that are watching this perhaps or, or, or new practitioners or whoever to, to look at you know doing something like this so, great because yeah. the integrative model is definitely the way of the future and with your GP training you would have had really strong training in diagnostic skills yeah well, obviously medicine I mean that's all mm. it's about really so um, yeah I often find I think probably one of the downsides to it or one of the negative sides to it that I found is that kind of you've got to kind of put complementary medicine on the back burner a little bit mm -hmm. um, and you do sort of have to commit to studying medicine and becoming and being a doctor and working as a doctor mm -hmm. um, because you know there's lots of other things in, is, you know in within medicine that you've got to do so it's a lot of the procedural stuff taking blood putting in cannulas putting in chest tubes like this is all fun far, far from complementary medicine. So you do need to, in, re, in reality, you do need to embrace that. And you do, if, you, if you're thinking about going down this pathway, you know, embrace those other things that medicine has, which we really do not do ever in complementary medicine. No, um, that's right. We're yeah. not set up for setting broken bones no, or emergencies. No, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. But I mean, mm. that that in itself is is really rewarding. And I mm. think I think that you know the preventative healthcare and stuff is amazing. And 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 really, like you said, this is the way of the future. Mm. You know. And I think the GP colleges are starting to realise that as well. And there's a big push for GPs to do health promotion and and stuff like mm. that rather than just treating disease. And mm. you know, I think that that's you know people are doctors are realizing that more and more and more but um but yeah it's kind of exciting doing all the procedural stuff and i think you know if you if you're that way inclined or you think that you know you could you know that would be rewarding then that's another aspect of doing medicine which is really you know can be really rewarding so yeah. okay well just specifically like with your toolbox of medicines that are yeah. available for you now um do you find that in your mind at times you would look at a patient and you can complement both the biomedicines yep. with the herbal medicines and nutritional medicines yeah oh look absolutely i think um you know i mean we all we all acknowledge that at some point people get sick enough or they, they, mm. they you know they have their pathology is serious enough that they need orthodox medicines i mean i think you'd be hard pressed to find you know a naturopath or herbalist who doesn't acknowledge that you know there's a there's a that, mm. that you can get to with with complementary medicine and and the and the paradigm underlying paradigm is quite different as well of course the health based mm. approach um, versus the the disease based approach but um, but I think we all acknowledge that at some point you know antibiotics are needed or at sometimes mm. surgery is needed or whatever um, and and that that's really really important um, but there certainly is a point up until that 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 kind of um, whether you want to call it you know subclinical illness or a lot of lifestyle based illness which is far more amenable to complementary medicines than, mm -hmm. than than orthodox medicines and I often find in clinic that I'll get where, where I'll, I'll review someone especially in the pediatric population where you think you know this person is not sick enough to need antibiotics mm. or this person is not sick enough to need referral to the ED or to a pediatrician mm -hmm. um, so that 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 sort of area there is where complementary medicines are absolutely um, really vital 
Mm, because you're working a lot with children, aren't you? Yeah, I guess that's, I mean, I'm sort of working towards that and that's mm -hmm. one of my main focuses um, is, is sort of paediatrics. And again, I think that complementary medicine in paediatrics is, is really, really important because, I mean, so much of what we do is health education and I think, I think that that's, that's one of the most important things that we do. And health education for kids um, is vitally important, but also for parents as well, you Great. know, so that, you know, the parents can make sure that they're doing the best they can for their kids' mm. health, but then kids Kids are also empowered and educated to look after their own their own health and mm. I look I think we're losing the battle if we don't do that absolutely um, education is yeah, key. yeah 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 yep. so um, mm. apart from all the wonderful tools that we have in our in our sort of therapeutic toolbox and nutritional therapies herbal therapies and and other other things like that and complementary medicine um, which I think are great and wonderful in kids because um, because they're gentle they mm. they promote um, bodily processes rather than suppressing and, and different things like that but um, but um, the, the, the health education I think is, is just absolutely vital. Teach your kids to heal themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, how do people get hold of you if they want to come and see you? Uh, so I practice in Toowoomba. Yeah. Um, I have a, a clinic in Toowoomba. Um, I see people um, as I can. I, yeah. I work full time in the hospital, so mm -hmm. um, I have limited <laughs> limited time. But I'm happy. You know, I see people. Yeah. Um, you know, outside of hours or on weekends and things like that. So, but they can kind of, like, get my details from the website and website. So yeah, find so a website. Yeah. So that's a find a practitioner. Yeah, on the yeah, National yep. Herbalist Association yep. of Australia website. Yep. Yep. And how long have you been a member of the NHAA, Stu? Uh, oh, I joined as a student member, so that would have been in 1998, yeah. I think, and or something you, like yeah, that. You were on the board? Yeah, so I was a student member for a couple of years and then um, I became a board member Oh, about seven years ago mm -hmm. now, I guess. So that's been a position that I've had, which, and I've looked at, I've been in different areas of the board mm -hmm. um, as an examiner for quite a while and now as an executive director. But um, yeah, it's something that I really enjoy and um, it sort of keeps my foot in the door of complementary medicine too. When I'm very much involved in orthodox medicine, I can keep myself grounded and. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> much at the cutting yeah. edge here. The integrative medical yeah. GPs of yeah. the future yeah. are really something that that um, you know, the National Herbalist Association yeah. of Australia support, and yep. that's fantastic. Thank yep. you for your time. Good. Excellent. Thanks, Dom. Thank you. Cool.